Hey y'all, this is Cyber Saloon. So today we're going over Tense Day Slime Season 2, Episode 5. I'm sorry I didn't put out a video discussing last week's episode. I had to travel somewhere, so I'll just kind of briefly touch on some of the major plot points that happened in last week's episode. And there were three, it came down to three big ones. The Kingdom of Falmouth and the Western Holy Church. Go figure, basically, cliche over the Church of the Bad Guys. But um, they basically want to get rid of uh, Rimuru's Empire. The Kingdom, of, the Kingdom of Falmouth, kind of like, they lay out the... Rimuru is making like all these like uh, monster types like the ogres and like uh, the goblins and all these other monster types extremely powerful like they even bring up like they gain more intelligence and power as he evolves them and so there's they look at that as like a major threat to their country and the western holy church basically just looks at them as like abhorrent creatures and they just need to be wiped out so you, that's the you have that one and then you have the other big issue is uh, Milam we finally get to see Milam again I'm glad she's back but it's very clear that she's not completely herself because you see her at the end of the last episode and she just looks like uh, she's being mind controlled. I think she's being used by um, Clayman. I'm not quite sure what he did to her, but she's about to go um, attack the 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 Beast Masters land, the Uranasia, the ones who sent their like emissaries um, in the first episode. And the other the other kind of big plot point was. Um, Mulan and uh, Yom, you kind of got to see their relationship deep, and it's very obvious they care for one another. And so there's like the big three issues that it sets. I mean, you also get like the annoying trio that you get um, that show up in this episode. They're basically they're outworlders as well. Like they're they're not originally from um, this world, and it's very clear. Um, and they're basically they're kind of like a bunch of edge boys like a like uh, we just want to cause trouble we just want to do what we want like so i mean i i think they're kind of annoying to be honest with you but those are like the big like kind of points that last episode brought up so this episode we start off with um yom receiving a legendary lap pillow from mulan and he talks about how like he, he wants to wake like up like this forever which who doesn't my man man but um and then he kind of walks off and like because uh, she plays it off and he's like well i'm serious so Yom and Grushrius are kind of having like a sword fight and Mulan's kind of watching it and then she gets kind of like a message from Clayman saying hey like you have one final task to do for me and then I'll give you your heart back and I'll set you free. Which even if she does this task I'm not entirely sure that he would even keep that to be honest with you. He's like a pretty shady individual. We've seen him um, in the last season as well. He's not exactly someone who's trustworthy but he basically tells her if she does this one last task not only will like if, if she doesn't do this task and everyone's going to die and like that. Like, she can be together with Yom if she, like, does this task. And, obviously, that's, like, a reason enough for her to even do it in the first place. So, she's obviously, you know, going to go through with it. Which doesn't really make sense to me. Because their task is to basically... They're working... She's... Her plan... Their plan is working with the Western Holy Church. And so, she... You see at the end, like, her cutting off communication, like, falls in line with what the Western Holy Church is about to do. And they're going to move in and kill everyone anyway. So, I'm not entirely sure, like... You know, she's obviously being lied to because, I mean, Yom's not going to just let them come in and kill all, like, these people who are his friends. So, it's just, like, I mean, he like, this plan actually goes against what she wants in the first place. Then we kind of cut to um, Benamaru and, like, she he, they receive, like, this urgent communication from um, the Eurasia, the, 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 the Beastmaster people that, like, they ended up, like, the emissaries they got from, like, the first episode. And you see they're, like, kind of an urgent... Um, like messaging like saying hey like we need you to take on our refugees because we're going to war with somebody and ben amaru's like wait what do you mean who are you going to war with <laughs> like not a nation milam like i love how milam's like this like catastrophe level event where she's so insanely powerful that like it's like going to war with like a, like a top tier superpower because she's that stupid strong which we know she's that strong from uh, last season so they're like get trying to get as many people out of there as possible before they end up uh, have having to take on milam because i'm not even sure all four like the emissaries like the most powerful ones um could even beat her but it's like again with with what point like their master like is literally invincible so i'm not sure what milam can even do against like him in the first place so they also get like a communique that um like the the peep, like the knights in the holy like the Western Holy Church, they're moving uh, into like Rimuru's Empire, and they're very they're headed towards the capital city. So you've got all these factors coming in, where it's just like where they they chose the perfect time to strike when Rimuru was gone, because like they're the Western Holy Church and freaking like Falmouth, they're they're, they're coming in to strike 
like uh, Clayman is wanting like uh, Mulan to basically like shut down their communication so they can basically take out his whole empire without him really being there to help. Because remember, he's kind of like Mulan, where he's like a catastrophe. He can basically take on armies by himself. So like all of these factors are kind of coming into play, which is why some bad stuff is about to go down. So we get the uh, anno- we get the, we get the clown trio coming into town, and their whole they're basically set up by Falmouth. They told them to go like create an incident that would like. Um, that would justify them coming in, like, to, to hurt one person. I always thought that was kind of a weak motive, because it's just, like, you, I feel like you would have to do, you would have to heavily politicize it, one, or you would have to, like, kill some major, like, human in order for, like, some countries to get involved. I felt like that was always kind of a weak kind of fire starter. Even if they wanted to, then I feel like they could have done something more than just that. So, the girl comes in and tries to me to go- Gobzo, which, she like, she's like, oh, he touched me, and, like, I'm just like, okay. Like, it's just like, all right, no, he didn't. And she's like, at first when I was when I noticed the crowd, I'm just like, they're like, oh man, maybe monsters are monsters. I'm just like, this is such a weak, like, only someone with an IQ of a rock is going to believe this. But we find out, like, her ability is kind of like manipulating, like, the subconsciousness of, like, those around her. So, like, her speech, um, like, is carrying throughout the crowd and like, creating mob, like, wow, like, Gobzo is such a bad guy. And, like, all this other stuff. And I felt bad for him, too, because, like, Gobzo is, like, the most honest person, like, probably in the show. I mean, the guy was the one who told Shauna that, um, like, uh, Rimuru and the boys were going out to the Elven brothel that one night when they were at the Dwarven capital. So, poor guy's trying to defend himself, and then we see, I love Gopta, he's come such, think about how, like, much long of a way he's come since season one, like, he's, he's become such a, like, a, not only is he, like, decently fucking, like, powerful, but he's also, like, a really good guy. He comes in, and he basically, like, he, he defends, like, uh, Gobzo. He's just like, yeah. it's like, man, you don't have to explain this to me. Like, I know you didn't do it. It's like, you shouldn't even have to ask that in the first place. But he also brings up, like, a very big rule uh, when you're going against, like, mob rule that, like, if you're having to defend yourself, it's kind of too late. Like, they've already turned on you at this point, which is true when you're dealing with mobs. It's just like, if, you ha- if you're having to say, like, I didn't do it, like, they don't care. It's just like, they're just going to come after you anyways. So, and, and then Gobzo does, uh, Gobzo does something really brilliant here. Like, he makes the crowd like turn to his side. Like he uses this as an excuse. It's like okay, like he talks about how Gobzo's like only true waifu that he really wants is um, Shion. Which, come on, Gobzo, we're all there with you. We all, <laughs> she's like everyone's top tier waifu. But after like she, he kind of gets the crowd to kind of laugh with him and kind of like joke around with him. And then at, like her like um, spell is broken over the crowd. And then she gets really pissed, and she, like, tries to do a spell that just kills everyone, which that would have been, like, a smart move. You also notice that, like, before that, like, she's the one trying to prove monsters are bad, and then, like, she throws in a line, like, oh, you stupid goblin. I'm just like, I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous. And she's already lost, like, the high ground or any foundation she even tried to lay at this point for an argument. And you see Shauna and Shion come up, and they're like, like, we know what you're doing. Like, the ability that you have is kind of banned here. You're not allowed to do that. And they're the ones who negated it uh, from the crowd in the first place. So they're about to throw down, and then you see like the really creepy dude, the guy who has like the really spiked hair, basically wa- basically wants to turn Sean into a, like a sex slave, and like he's got some weird fantasies going on. And then like Shion's about to come in and kick his ass, and like under any normal circumstances, like these people are like jokes. They're like they're kind of like peons. Like their abilities really ain't shit. Like. Um, like, all the people who were in, like, Rimuru's Empire, like, way above than what they would ever be. Like, even Gopta, even Gopta could easily, like, kick these people's asses. Like, because he's over here training with, like, that Ogre Master. But we've seen that, like, Gopta's actually decently strong. So, under any normal circumstances, like, this wouldn't be really much to worry about. But what happens next is kind of what screw, which is about, is about to screw everyone. So... She's, she, Mulan's about to fill out, fulfill her task and cutting off communications so that Rimuru can't be, like, reached to know what's really going on in his empire. I'm, I am very curious to see, like, how exactly far away he is, because if he doesn't get there in time, it, like, you're talking about some, like, some serious casualties are about to come up, because, like, they can't even protect themselves at this point. See, she ends up revealing her demon form, and Grushius tries to, explain, like, talk her out of what she's doing, because she brought up the fact that ever since she's been acting weird, like, the whole day, Ever since they found out that Milan was basically going to go attack um, uh, the Beastmaster Empire. I forget what the specific name It's Uranasia, but there's another name for it. But, like, she's been acting really weird. And she, he tries it. He knows that she's up to something. She reveals her demon form. I, heard, I think her demon form actually looks pretty cool. I really dig her demon form. It looks really cool. 
And uh, he tries to like talk her out of it, and she's like, "No, like I have to do this." And then Yom comes in like a true homeboy and just tells her like, "Hey, like, like I love you." And like she's like, "Oh, you know, I'm like a demon," but like he's like, "I don't really care, man. It doesn't matter what you look like. It's just like she." He, and she tries to explain like, "Oh, like, you know, I wasn't like that's not my true form. It was meant to like appease you." But like he like he's like, "I don't care, man." He, like, he just comes up and hugs her. I'm just like, "What a what a real dude. That's a real man right there." Unfortunately, because because she loves him and she thinks that like she, Yom's gonna die if she doesn't do this, like she's willing to risk that to like so she can try to protect him. And she ends up casting the magic barrier, well the anti magic uh, barrier around the city. And at the same time, like the Western Church, like Holy Alliance, they end up casting their spell as well. Which God, I get it. I don't know what that one specifically does. It ends up creating a double barrier. So Shion, Shauna, and like every like everyone everyone in the whole town like is basically about to get screwed over really bad because they can't use their abilities anymore. So Benamaru, Shion, Shauna, uh, Gabta, Gobzo, like the the Ogre Sword Master, like like they can't do anything anymore and they're pretty weak and so they can't even beat the, like the, the like the crown, the clown trio that's going up against them which they like the if rumor doesn't hurry up and get back like soon like if he's too far away like you're there's some bad stuff about to go down here like cuz like they can't protect themselves like they're holding like under normal circumstances like rumor's empire is completely unbeatable because they're like, he the level of like magic entities that he has in his empire are so strong like individually like one person could basically nearly take out a whole army. Like one of the ogres, like Benamaru, the the guy with the single horn, like the blue haired, like uh, like like really powerful one. Everyone calls hot. Uh, Shauna, Shion, like these people could take on like armies by themselves. And you you add on top of that, like the goblins are really powerful as well. The dire wolves, the orcs, like he, the the lizard people. Um, it's like uh, Gabru. I miss Gabru. He has like all these people like the within like the empire that are such like monsters that like they can't really be messed with. But, but they're like a really peaceful people. But they're but the Western Holy Church and uh, Falmouth they're about to come in and like screw them really bad. If um, remember, I I suspect that you're probably gonna see some bad stuff go down next episode. You might see some casualties from certain people because I don't think Rimuru's that close from. Um, uh, where he was because he wasn't that he was back in that town uh, teaching his kids again but our predictions for next episode you might you're probably gonna see Shion, shauna uh unfortunately like got to like in a lot of the other ones they're probably about the they're in for a rough time next episode you're probably gonna get their ass beat tortured and some other stuff because on top of the clown trio you also have like all these like uh, they have like a thousand so knights that are about to come in uh, from Falmouth and um, like I think they're called, like the Holy Knights or something like that. They're about to come in and completely screw over all those people as well. So I really hope that Rimuru doesn't take too long to like get back because I mean I don't want to see any of these like people I care about get hurt. Like, but I also feel bad for um, Mulan as well. I don't. I think she's been heavily deceived by Clayman. And I think some bad stuff is uh, probably gonna. I don't. I find. I don't know. It's fine. I find it ominous. I feel like she's gonna die within the next two episodes. I'm going to feel really bad for Yom if that happens. That's all I got for this one, guys. Also, I'm curious about Milam, too. Like I, like, I wonder if she's, like, might show up next episode. I'm not trying. I think that Clayman or someone, something has happened to her. Because that's, that has put her in, like, a different state of mind. Or is, like, mind controlling her or something like that. That she's been lied to about. So I don't know. I'm curious if we'll end up finding that out next episode as well. That's all I got for this one, guys. Take care, and I will see you guys in the next one.